Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Top Stories. Several projects are assessed by the U.S. Development Institution OPIC for investment. The government of St. Lucia signs the loan agreement with the Exim Bank for the rehabilitation of roads. A national school safety policy for St. Lucia is taking shape. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Development projects described as game changers for St. Lucia were the focus of an official visit here by a high-level delegation from the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, the United States Government Development Finance Institution. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney guided the delegation on a tour of the site for the cruise ship terminal in Viewfort, as well as the cul-de-sac port. General Norville reports. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney briefed the delegation on a number of projects identified for investment. The Prime Minister explained the first of the projects was the cruise ship terminal in Viewfort that would be in partnership with Carnival Cruise Lines. The government has participated in two years of discussions. Feasibility and technical studies have also been completed and the government has agreed to lease eight acres of land in the Viewfort area to Carnival Cruise Lines. A new pier will also be constructed with the capacity to hold two 6,000 passenger vessels. The project is valued at $55 million. Another project is the cargo facility in the Kaldisak area. Prime Minister Shastney indicated that preliminary studies have been completed and the relevant parties are working on refining the details of the project. The aim, according to the Prime Minister, is to commence construction on the project no later than the end of 2019 in an effort to complete the project within the next two years. The last project on the agenda was the North-South Highway, the Prime Minister explained. And we've broken down that project into um, three parts. So the first part would really be from the Darren Sammy Stadium that everybody knows up north, connecting to Denry, and that we would also put a major archery um, connecting that highway through Babineau on the Alan Bousquet Highway. So that would be phase one. Phase two of the project would be from Denry with a tunnel through to Bartolil, which would then connect a new highway to where we're putting the cargo facility. And phase three down the road would be from Denry to View Fort. But obviously that's the one that we require um, the least priority at this point. But certainly the first phase of the project is critical to us because of the traffic congestion we're already experiencing between Cast Trees and Grosley. And the fact is, is that we don't have the physical space to, to introduce a proper four-lane highway. OPEC's acting president and chief executive officer David Bohegan expressed gratitude to the government and people of St. Lucia for their hospitality. He explained that since the inception of OPIC, it has invested some $3.5 billion into various projects in the Caribbean. For St. Lucia, these included the hospitality and manufacturing sectors. Bohegan added that the entity is looking to do more in the Caribbean and having visited St. Lucia and been presented with the government's vision, the OPIC has a better idea of what role it can play. The acting president and chief executive officer added that step two commences when the delegation returns to Washington. Well, clearly there's interest from President Trump in trying to invest more in St. Lucia. There's also interest in Congress to be able to do more in the Caribbean. So our next step is going back to Washington tomorrow and helping policymakers understand the environment down here from a strategic standpoint. But I think more importantly is what we can do in the days that follow, which is talking to investors throughout the United States to help them understand the opportunities that you're building here in infrastructure and in tourism and beyond where we can help empower entire societies. We're particularly proud of our 2X Women's Initiative in any way that we can help women-owned or women-managed or women-supporting businesses is something that we want to do more of. So I think telling the story that the Prime Minister has sketched today is something that we need to do in the investment community and in Washington. Bohegan well, re-emphasized the Prime Minister's sentiments that the U.S. regards St. Lucia as a valuable ally and is always looking to strengthen such relationships. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The Government of St. Lucia has signed the first loan agreement with the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for the financing of major development projects here. The Export-Import Bank has agreed to finance the Hurunara International Airport, 
redevelopment project and the reconstruction or rehabilitation of secondary roads and collector roads. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney on Wednesday affixed his signature to the agreement for the first disbursement of funds which will go towards the road projects and the housing sector. We're signing the first loan agreement with Exim Bank today, which will be for $50 million, of which $41 million is going into, $42 million is going into the road reconstruction. $8 million is being divided equally um, uh, into housing, as well as was into the refurbishment of the schools, which we're going to be continuing again um, this year with another $10 million EC into both of those initiatives. So. The Taiwanese-funded road development program, amounting to 42 million U.S. dollars over 36 months, is about to commence on strategic 13 roads island-wide, including roads that will link farmers and rural communities with the rest of the island. 140 CMOS farmers are benefiting from a new business link. Export Say Lucia has facilitated the first shipment of CMOS to the U.S. with rural community of Prale. Emanating from Export St. Lucia's recent mission to the United States, it was observed that growing consumer trends around healthy eating has presented an opportunity for dried sea moss from St. Lucia. The product is in high demand, especially with the increased vegan community. Through the guidance of Export St. Lucia, the Poilet Sea Moss Association has capitalized on the opportunity and has shipped its first export to the United States. Sunita Daniel is the Chief Executive Officer of Export St. Lucia. The buyer in the U.S. has already told us that from the time that the CMOS arrived in the U.S. that all of the packets had already been sold out. So he's very interested in working further with them. Um, we are quite excited to continue working with them. We want to also work along the value chain with them in terms of labeling, proper packaging. We have market access to the U.S. through the various trade agreements that have been signed. However, market penetration has been an issue for us and this was one of the first ways of penetrating the market when the consumer now has a taste of this product and knows that they like the product um, for us then it's about branding that and getting the CMOS producers up to that level. President of the Poilet CMOS Farmers Association Bonaventure Jabatis says the main aim of the association is to reduce poverty in the community of Poilet and he anticipates that with this potential new market for the export of sun-dried CMOS it would go a long way in helping the association realize its goal. At one time almost everybody in the um, um community was um, in one way or another engaged in banana producing. But today, um, with the demise of the banana industry, um, this has changed and most people are unemployed. But um, with this um, possibility that we now have uh, with CMOS, um, people will now be able to find an alternative to banana uh, production. There are 140 farmers involved in the association. The impact is tremendous for them, not only because the price that they are getting is a very good price for a product, um, an overseas product, but also because it goes directly to the association. It goes directly to them and we all know the multiplier effects that can have on a very small rural community. Our job really is to ensure that they can get the maximum price for the CMOS for their product and also get into other markets. CMOS farmer and employee of the Poilet CMOS Farmers Association, Andrina Stanislas, says she is eager to see the impact of this first shipment and anticipate an upsurge in CMOS farming as well as job creation. The demand is great and right now we need as many farmers as we could possibly find in order to supply. Right now we're trying to supply to the U.S. So the demand is great and we have little farmers. So I would encourage others to get involved because, I mean, we all need money and we all actually want more so we could achieve more, so get on board. The Pawn Seamoss Farmers Association is eagerly anticipating the expansion of business with the U.S. and other markets. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. 
Representatives from the Ministry of Health and Wellness were recently granted the opportunity to play a significant part towards developing gender equality in health. More from Fennel Neptune. Efforts at strengthening national capacities and advancing gender equality in health were undertaken as the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, hosted a workshop recently. The workshop provided participants with the opportunity to conduct gender analysis in health and to discuss the development and use of a gender and health profile. Gender and Health Advisor of PAHO, Kafi Kuya, says, this activity is important as it will allow participants to develop a work plan to ensure national gender and health profile. The way the workshop is designed is that we would look at uh, what are some of the pressing issues with regards to achieving gender equality in health as a part of health equity. Second, uh, having the tools to be able to conduct uh, what are the causes using data and statistics to appreciate differences and disparities in health. And then thirdly, uh, being able to produce a national document uh, to advocate for stronger uh, policies uh, to ensure that everyone has the same opportunity uh, to have good health care. Biostatistician in the Department of Health and Wellness, Phil Leon, says he's very pleased that the workshop will provide them with the knowledge on how the health sector can use gender analysis tools to effectively reduce health inequalities in St. Lucia. It brings to light the disparities between the gender, especially when it comes to our data collection processes and how we move further. What we can appreciate is that we're getting the information and the sense of how there's a difference between sex and gender. Sex being the biology, gender being the rules that are assigned and how we, we cater in terms of equality and equity. And what we've been finding is, yes, we have information, <coughs> we have data, um, we have been making moves towards interventions, but we've been lacking in that pointed area. The Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, is hopeful that St. Lucia will be able to develop a gender and health profile, given priority to selected health topics within national health priorities. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible and remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome once again to Happenings in Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. School Sports Coordinator Isabel Alexander Markey is anticipating that the Inter-District Primary School's female football competition will be able to earn its place on the calendar of school sports events. The success of the 2019 tournament has influenced her conclusion that football at this level among females will only serve to develop interest in women's football in St. Lucia. It's an added um, spot for the girls to go into. We see a, a, a kindled interest in, in the females going into some of the so-called male-dominated sports. And, foot, and football is another one of them. And so we're looking to see um, greater improvements. We're seeing it continuing in the future. And we can only up the standard as the years go by. The St. Lucia Football Association is one of the entities involved in the running of the competition and it also sees it as a crucial factor in strengthening the nursery for emerging talent. The Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan presented a new volunteer to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on Tuesday morning. Rosalind Lee, 29, will serve the ministry for one year as a table tennis coach, replacing William Lien, whose volunteer service ended last year. Lee is now the only female table tennis coach on island 
and will work alongside head coach Chris Wells and coach Stephen Joseph to advance the sport among locals. Lee has started her stint meeting with junior members of the National Table Tennis Center and coaching at the Ave Maria Girls Primary School. And in that item on table tennis, we come to the end of your update on youth development and sports today. Thanks, Ryan. A national school safety policy for St. Lucia is taking shape. This week, another consultation was held to hammer out key aspects. The Model Safe Schools program was designed to enhance the capacity of the Ministries of Education in Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines to incorporate and mainstream comprehensive disaster risk management considerations in education sector policies, planning and operations. The program is being funded by the Caribbean Development Bank and implemented by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SIDAMA. Consultants are on island this week to be part of a broad-based stakeholder consultation with members of the National Safe Schools Committee, which include education officers, the police, and the Ministry of Health. The school safety coordinator with the Ministry of Education, Bernays Kodra, says the aim of the consultation will help develop the school safety policy for St. Lucia. What we are looking to do is to gather the views and the input of many other stakeholders where school safety is, is, is uh, concerned. For example, NYC, as it relates to the students' input, um, as it relates to the school safety policy. We look at the Ministry of Health as we continue to partner with, with agencies um, within the, the Ministry of Health as it relates to environmental health and, and um, when we look at various um, pandemics and so on. So. We are looking at partnering with all of those agencies. The um, Department of Physical Planning, for example, as you look at um, topographical maps and hazard mapping for our schools. So all of those things, they will be looking to gather information to make our policy more um, in-depth. Eleanor Jones is a disaster risk management and sustainable development strategist who has worked throughout the region. Her company, Environmental Solutions Limited, was contracted by CDEMA to undertake an inspection of schools across the participating islands and to develop the safe schools policy. The safe schools policy is going to be looking at, at how schools prepare for these extreme events, for the extreme vulnerability which they face in addition to that. So it means that they would be looking at the, the structures, the extent to which the structures. So we have an engineer on the team who is doing some of those assessments. We're set, we have seven schools in St. Lucia that we're looking at. Um, then we're looking also at whether there are emergency plans, what you have within the schools for handling emergencies, whether they're health emergencies or or um, natural hazard emergencies. We're looking at the vulnerability. Where are these schools located? Are they by rivers? Are they by mountains, etc.? And also, very importantly, we're looking at the people aspect. Funding for the implementation of the program is provided by the CDB through a grant of 746,000 euros under the African, Caribbean, Pacific, European Union and Caribbean Development Bank National Disaster Risk Management in Caraform Countries Program. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. The world's climate is changing and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change. And everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms, and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. 
Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Madame du Parti Marquis de Responsabilité pour Information en Gouvernement cette fois-ci à CGIS, à CBP Télévision Nationale puis à NTN, qui a présenté Nouvelle Arqueo, présenté Primus Hutchinson. Il y a une grande délégation de la corporation des investissements privés à Pays de l'Amérique pour l'autre pays à la terre, à ce même pays représentatif, une institution pour le développement financier à gouvernement. Visitez cette liste, mais qui est passé le 22 mai. La délégation a été en bas conduite chef officiel qui est aussi déjà appuyé comme président de la corporation pour le moment. Et il y a cette liste pour explorer la façon pour trouver la location pour conduire l'investissement en affaires énergie avec l'autre secteur qui est critique. C'est même la corporation a visité la place que le gouvernement a marqué pour conduire l'investissement. Ça a été fait et puis le Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasney et le cabinet qui a visité cette place a visité, c'était pour un vieux fort au Siakastri et le Cul-de-Sac. J'ai vu pour Bok ça c'est le grand affaire Will, un Cul-de-Sac qui a été à ta passé, ça c'est Glenda Duvalis. J'ai commencé à travailler sur le développement de sac et puis un projet pour éprouver à sa belle bord de la mer c'est bon. Si l'on va il était observé que le bord de la mer a tenu besoin d'attention. Alors, lui et puis travailler pour une initiative là pour conduire un projet de nettoyage. Il y a vrai que ça c'était un morceau de travail qui était très bien pour nettoyer tout le bord de la mer et pour établir diverses facilités. En parmi ça qui est déjà établi, c'est une place pour jouer au volleyball. Il y a un type de placement pour jouer au football et il y a un place pour le cricket. Là aussi, il y a une table et une chaise pour les gens qui ont visité pour un petit pique-nique et pour observer et pour un petit barbecue. Là aussi, il y a une facilité pour éviter. Le projet a commencé en 2017 et fini à l'aide pour observer le 40e anniversaire de cette ci Alors, sur l'autre programme, nous allons porter plus de nouvelles à sa visitation de la Division qui est ce que ça pour affaires commerciales un registre qui est celle-ci, qui est en opération depuis le 19 janvier 1916. J'ai rapporté bon succès. Quand l'audience commerciale ça là, j'ai enregistré une augmentation en l'humour qu'il a trouvé pour ces trois années qui passent, sorti en 1944 en 2016 pour Yonsa en 2018. C'est une opinion de vision qui, ce succès ça là, qui a gonflé l'économie pays et aussi le développement, parce que les gens ont plus confiance pour conduire l'investissement, parce que le système de justice est plus facilement à présent. Tout ça est possible, parce que l'agence de voie que le gouvernement établit, ça c'est le Conseil national pour éprouver la compétition et la production, a implémenté plusieurs réformations en manière à ce qui n'y a pas de dispute à cette ci Alors, le Conseil de a conduit une initiative pour établir le cahier d'audience pour adresser un uh, cas commercial, directeur Conseil national de l'éprouvement, compétition et production, Fiona Hinson, expliquait des goûts sa tasse qu'il a dans la porte à un petit moment qui est en opération. Selon Hinson, il a observé une bonne qualité de l'argent déjà défriché par conséquent des disputes qui trouvaient réglées vêtements. Registration, un bureau registre pour grand cahier conseil, Sharon Gardner Hippolyte, qui est responsable pour adresser cas civil, criminel et aussi affaires commerciales. Remarquez qu'avant, la tenue en cahier l'audience pour adresser affaires commerciales. Ce cas-là, la tenue pour rester en ligne et puis l'autre cas, qu'on dévoile ses disputes affaires cotiques, affaires trafic et qu'on parmi l'autre cas. Il y a vrai qu'à présent, ce cas-là, qu'a trouvé attention bien vite, et que ça a marché très bien pour la commune business de ci je dois ajouter aussi que l'on considère à l'année 2018, la tenue en haut de 100 millions de dollars ici devant Kyle Audience pour faire jugement et qui pour encore trouvé attention pour trois années. Et qu'à présent, il a trouvé devant Kyle Audience pour jugement sur la fête. Et il remarque que ça a placé en l'eau confiance pour la continuer à éclamer devant Kyle Audience. Pour cette moment, l'année. Il y a un officier qui est branché et puis division commerciale là, qui a assisté le juge là pour délivrer le jugement. Et selon le registre, tout ce qui est bien souvent, il a reçu l'attention entre 14 pour 21 jours et puis le jugement entre 3 pour 6 mois. Autorité des affaires touristiques, cette ci j'ai choisi pour mettre en opération un festin de carême pour cette ci Ça fait comme carême là. C'est une place qui est très en demande. Le spectacle a été pris en pays de Trinidad. L'action a continué en l'autre pays de Caribla, 
tout un effort pour agrandir les mots étrangers pour visiter cette ici pour expliquer ces cultures. Nous, il y a un grec autorité à Christopher Gustav avoué que cette ici c'est un joli pays qui n'est pas pile ça qui est naturel et qui est available seulement à cette ici pour encourager les touristes pour visiter. Mais selon Gustav, la nouvelle façon pour improuver à son activité qui a pris cours les souhaits et servir pour exemple voici des nouveaux segments là, chacun percé tout ces pays caribéens là et qu'à Oliwan la terre aussi. Alors, ce qu'il a fait présentement, c'est pour assurer que les gens qui visitent cette ici, il y a eu ça, d'où c'est n'était quoi Le directeur de Ban Carnival Legend, Mande Lewis, expliquait que c'est Ban Carnival cette ici a chacun fait un pile travail pour improuver les produits des affaires Carnival cette ici. Il déclarait que, oui, j'ai joué un rôle en célébration Carnival avec les produits touristiques. Uh, pour du touristique pays. Gustave dit que vous jouez bien engagé dans la célébration après la façade de notre l'Amérique. Il y a nous qui en l'eau, en ce moment, qui a participé dans le carnaval cette ici, qui a sorti Trinidad, Babad, et juste l'Amérique. Quand il y a un pile cette ici qui a visité pour ces autres carnaval là. Ce autres carnaval là, en cette ici, qui a ouvert officiellement samedi le 25 mois mai, à mai, sous sa là en la vigie. C'est comme ça nous avons tout un nouvelle nous aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant. Pour garder mon cabaret, une invitation pour jeter plus moins encore. Si des conseils fait leur vie, des gars pour se trouver l'autre, nous faisons la croyance. À présent, mon cabaret se trouve niche. Merci au Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Winds will be blowing from the east near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Weak and stable conditions in the lower atmosphere may bring some showers over that area during the forecast period. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 1.21 p.m. and will be high again at 7.53 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was low at 2.48 p.m. and will be high again at 9 p.m. The seas slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.35 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.